Well, hello, people. Well, there you go. I fixed snow, sort of, and the seven politically correct people. But just a bit, it's, it's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. I remember the film many, many years ago. But let's count how many there is there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's, there's eight politically correct people. What's going on here? Has that smaller guy kind of just wandered in on the shoot? He's not supposed to be there? I don't know. I think everybody, though, really remembers the Snow White and Seven Dwarfs. I think it was one of the biggest grossing films for Disney, wasn't it? Of course, that was in Disney's heyday. But if you think back when it was made, think about the cartoon the way it plays. It's absolutely beautiful. It kind of had a life of its own. In fact, it was a goddamn masterpiece, wasn't it? That still holds up today. So why did they do a remake with real people of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs? Well, because they have a built-in fan base, don't they, already? That's why. I mean, they could have made anything a brand new story about something else with these type of characters in. But then again, nobody would care, would they? Nobody would watch it. And you know this is Femon-type stuff because it's so damn woke. Femons generally don't come out with original ideas, do they? They're really good at monkey see, monkey do. If you see on the, say, social media and there's a guys or guys are doing something, after a little while, all of a sudden, Femons will be doing exactly the same thing. They won't be doing something really original. They just copy. So what is this new film going to be, people they're going to be aimed at? Well, it's going to be the small minority of the population. I wonder what the original Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs was targeted at. Well, pretty much goddamn everybody. Children, grown-ups. It was good for all of them. And it did very well. It made Disney who they were. It's pretty obvious that this new one is going to be a disaster. And if I was that eager guy who's getting two billion dollars an hour, I'd pull the plug on it now before it cost any more money. Because it's just money down the drain. I mean, it seems like this Iger guy's got a sort of a plan to sort of destroy Disney as quickly as possible. I mean, I'm not a real business guy or anything, but I know how to solve Disney's problems. And that's get rid of the goddamn wokeness. Stop virtual signaling. Make something that everybody will like. Non-political. I mean, it's not really a surprise that wokeness comes from a femon brain, is it? It's all damn gobbledygook. But if you notice, wokeness always brings the femon forward, makes her more important, and belittles all the men. You could call it another word, like masculinity assassination. So did you ever wonder why most of the films years ago, and even the cartoons and all that, they always made the male the hero? Because if you look throughout history, he was. Femons usually come along after the hard work is done, and it's not dangerous anymore. But the wokeness seems to be continuing, and if you're anything like me who's a little bit older and understands Femons' brains, they seem to make the same mistakes over and over again, don't they? They pick the child instead of the real nice guy, and wonders why it didn't work. And they have a big cry about it, and play the victim, and then they go out and do it all again. So can anybody tell me why there's eight people in this instead of seven? Now, in the original Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, there was no femons in the dwarfs, was there? I mean, it really wouldn't work, would it? But there's one in this one. You know, they're the token femon there, at the old virtual signaling tick box. And she's not white, of course. So I guess the Barbie film is getting some traction, at least at the moment. I don't know why people go on about this Margie Robbins or whatever her name is. I don't find her that attractive at all. She's got a big mouth. (laughs) And is it Ryan Gosling, the other actor? Yeah, well, he never comes across as a very strong man. Comes across as quite weak, wishy-washy. The things I've seen him in, he's always acted exactly the same in every film. Of course, he's the perfect person to be the leading man in today's films, though. He's got no grit and hardly any charisma. He definitely won't outshine the leading lady. He can't. He hasn't got anything. But that's good, because whatever Femon actor plays beside him, 
they will always outshine him. And their lies and that all continue on the social media and the news. You've seen the weather maps sometimes, just lately. It looks like the planet's on fire. And all they're doing is trying to scaremonger everybody. That seems to be their job nowadays. Don't tell the truth. Just keep the people worried all the time. Then they won't be thinking about our hands in their back pockets stealing their wallet. Anyway, I don't listen to the news anymore because, well, it's all doom and gloom, isn't it? And when I listen to it, I don't get doom and gloom. I just start laughing. It's become absolutely ridiculous. I mean, these news presenters are bleeding better actors than most people in Hollywood today. Hi-ho, hi-ho, it's off to work we go. Hi-ho, hi-ho.